Duglum went the little green frog one day. Duglum went the little green frog. Duglum went the little green frog one day, and the frog went glump, glump, glump. But we all know frogs go. <laughs>You should have written a script. You were going to write me a script. I was never going to write you a script. All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of... You just bumped the camera. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Popple Bonks in Kandagungans. Yes. Hi. So, uh, we've obviously been pretty quiet for the last two years. Uh, we've released one, vid one video. How many videos? I don't even know. None. <laughs> None since COVID. None since COVID. We've released a video since COVID. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and so effectively, uh, yeah, we thought we'd put together a little special episode with some footage that we have uh, sitting in the bank. Yeah, this show that we're making about bonks and kind of gungans, it's meant to be, uh, it is fun. That's what we're, have, we're doing it for. We're having fun, um, but it's also for a bit of education, um, letting you guys know what's, what's in and around our, our cities and our local environments and which ones are important to to conserve for the future, which ones are not doing so well. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's a good little documentation of frogs around and... <laughs> yeah. Although what we do is silly, uh, we sort of hope that it does promote frog conservation as a whole. And one of the uh, most important, uh, I suppose, players in frog conservation in Australia is Frog ID. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, frog ID is a a phone app basically that uh, allows the general public to participate in citizen science by recording frog calls in their local creeks or wherever they go um, and because frog calls are so distinct to the species of frog it gives us really good uh, data on distribution and uh, population numbers. Getting heaps and heaps of frog recordings all over Australia um, and you know the people at the museum are getting some good information out of that and have been able to write some papers and have a better understanding of um, what's going on in our environment and as it's changing over time as well. Seeing that like a uh, green tree frogs are sort of disappearing from the Sydney area, finding out that species that were just lumped into one species are actually a, a complex of other species as well. A good example of that is uh, Latoria dentata. It's been split up into three, so you've got uh, Latoria bilatus, yep. Latoria dentata, which is the true one, that's one I get around here. Uh, bilatus is the northern up in Queensland one now, and then there's one down south of Sydney. I don't know what that one is. No, I don't. But that does mean we have to make an amendment for one of our previous episodes where we ticked uh, Latoria dentata, whereas uh, in reality it was uh, Latoria bilatus. That's right. So consider it amended. Armchair tick if we were birders. So basically, uh, we wanted to make this video to highlight Frog ID and the good work that they do because at the end of 2019, while attempting to uh, do an episode on Feloria Kandagangan, uh, and I say attempting because we never actually got to see the frog in question, uh, we incidentally collected the only recording, the only audio recording of Feloria Kandagangan post the fires in that season. So although this is like a silly video and uh, you know we just create sort of fun content, we ended up somehow contributing to science, yeah. which yeah. is good. So we decided to make a quick video about Frog ID and if you stick around until the end of the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, <laughs> so we've decided to make a quick video uh, about Frog ID. And if you stick around to the end, you can see a mini episode of us struggling through uh, an incredibly damp rainforest looking for these little fuckers. <laughs> Yeah, in future, hopefully, we'll do another Flory Kundagungan episode and um, we'll see it with our very own eyes, but maybe in a different capacity with a researcher. And we've decided that we are going to tick this species uh, just on the basis of it being heard. Because seeing an animal is not the only way to experience it. And certainly with many of these vulnerable species, it's not always best for the animal uh, anyway. And birders do it, so we will too. Sure. Just to mention, uh, Frog ID have not sponsored this video, nor are we affiliated in any way with them. Um, this is just something we've been wanting to do um, to, as they contribute such a huge amount to frog conservation. So first of all, download the app. Have you done it? Okay. 
Then you just go to the recording function and if you can hear frogs call, you just click record. What's that frog, Sean? Latoria Pisaniano. Sure. Anyway, we're not going to submit this to the Frog ID team, but that's literally all you have to do. You have to, all you have to do is download the app, create an account, go to your local creek, go to your local pond, go to your backyard, wherever you hear frogs, just click record, hold it down, and then submit it. And the Frog ID team do the rest. Another aspect of a frogging that we wanted to talk to you about, which we think is incredibly important, we don't really highlight a lot on the show, is hygiene. Hygiene's pretty great. Frogs don't like uh, unhygienic things. They do especially not. Especially people with covered in oils and insect repellent and sunscreen and all that crap you wash yourself with. It's important not to be getting that into the environment. Not to mention the numerous pathogens such as uh, chytrid fungus which we can carry around on our feet and then end up causing the extinction of frogs. And, uh, I know that we're approaching frogs uh, sort of like Pokemon where we're ticking them off and we're looking for species but most important thing is that we're respecting the habitat and uh, we're not carrying diseases and just gross shit into otherwise pristine uh, creek systems. Yeah. Here's Daniel's handy guide on how to clean your feet. <laughs> First off, you got to scrub your boots, then disinfect them. So after I've scrubbed my down my boots, uh, working, I'm going between sites, uh, different into different catchments. So I'll scrub down my boots with a bit of water and a scrubbing brush. And then I'll just spray it lightly um, at the end with a light bleach solution and all killing it. Bacteria that's just sitting around my boots. To, you gotta make sure all the dirt and crud is off your shoes before you do that, otherwise it's just not gonna work. Clean off the mud, disinfect your boots. That's literally it. The other thing is, please don't touch the frogs. One of the most important rules is to not handle the frogs. Because they're very sensitive to temperature changes, they're very sensitive to pathogens, to grease, anything on your hands, just don't do it. If you've seen us do it, it's because uh, we're, we've been trained in how to handle frogs. Uh, both of us handle frogs uh, for a living. It's just not, it's not good practice. If you want to slap a frog, just do it lightly. <laughs> yeah. Don't slap the frogs. We've said this so many times, don't <laughs> slap the frogs. Don't do that. Don't handle the frog, okay? Don't. So you've made it to the end of the video, and as promised, we've put together some footage of our Floria Kundagungan adventure. At the time, we were pretty disappointed that we didn't see that little frog. Mm -hmm. But in hindsight, uh, as I said, it's not all about seeing the frog, is it? We heard it. It's pretty cool. So we have three hours worth of footage that we're gonna play for you right now. Uncut. <laughs> Uncut, uncensored, unfunny. And as we said, it's not always about finding the frog. You've got so much cake in your beard. That's what people want. <laughs> you do it close enough for the ASMR. <laughs> Enjoy. I like your hairstyle. Thanks. Is it, that nice or is it not nice? No, it is nice. It, when are you going back to your ashram in the north of India? Cool. Let's find some frogs. Yeah. Try to do cool t camera techniques. We get fucking wet. You fucking drenched me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, last time I think of cool cinematic <laughs> techniques for the video. Good spot. 
You heard it? <laughs> it's just here. Holy shit. Holy shit. Fuck. Well, we, know, we still need to find it in all of this native spinach. So we're gonna be quiet while Daniel records a frog ID recording. Floria Kandigungan are day callers. So, so I'm gonna shut up for a second so Daniel can record. How good is that sound? So close. So we definitely know that the frog's here, so now it's going to be a matter of whether we can find him. The last thing we want to do is destroy a burrow or a habitat, like that's just not what we're about. So um, I'm really happy to have heard it. I really want to see it, obviously, but not at the expense of the animal. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm happy getting distracted. I'm just getting distracted by this fucking frog. And then cut the scene where we dig the hole <laughs> and then find him and then put him somewhere else. along the car got a little bit of ice shine and just like that there's a place wasn't terribly hot eh Can come have a look, yeah I saw you I don't have a good place photo yeah all mosquitoes like lava as well You've got a great bard far <laughs> farg. Farg. <laughs> a great bard frog, Mixophys fasciolatus. That's two species of Mixophys in one night. Double. You can hear him calling off in the distance. Stony Creek frog. Give me your tail, little one. So it seems we've come here a bit early before the rains all the creeks are still dry we were expecting to find Latoria ladder palmata and Imnodynastes duramelli but neither are to be seen at the moment and the creek is real dry Latoria piersoniana cascade tree frog I can hear a few cooling up always and we just have little water dragon, Intelligama luzuri. So we've been sitting here for like an hour now. The uh, the floor has stopped calling, and we've just been waiting to see if it'll call again. But it's pretty draining on our spirits already having not found one yesterday and if we don't find one today it's going to be a while until we see one We often wonder how a frog that's uh, yellow and red can just sort of disappear so quickly and then you have a look at these leaves that are around that sort of aren't really aren't super red or yellow it could easily be the same coloration as a Kundagungan just sitting there and you never see it. A perfect example of why we um, take so many precautions to, you know, to stop the spread of 
pathogens and fungi. It's relatively pretty fungi. It's called Favalachia calicera, and uh, it's actually from Madagascar. It's an introduced species, and even here, in the middle of this pristine rainforest, it still managed to find its way here. So, really, in my mind, the only way that could have happened is via people walking it through here. I'm not sure if it's big enough to tick. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think that matters. <laughs> not bigger this easily. A lot bigger than this. But we've got the no dynasty Duramelli Duramelli. Duramelli Duramelli. It's the uh, grey bubble bunk. Um, just a. This honestly can't have been an adult for very long. Tiny little thing almost squished it as I was walking down the path. Just to give you a, an idea of just how big. <laughs> yeah. I think the real question is, where are its parents? Where are the big bugs? Where are the big pobble bonks? Because we certainly haven't seen them. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, we took that place. Yeah, that's right. It's worth... Um, we've had a pretty miserable day when it's come to looking for frogs. I mean, we did see a flays, but... And heard a Floria cundigungan, but it feels good to see a new frog and tick it off. Yeah, where are the big bonks? Where are the big pobble bonks? Pristine Floria cundigungan habitat. What kind of frog is that?